Now we're starting. Whoo! We're going to start very simple in Sphinx pose. So as you're ready, slide into Sphinx. Letting your feet be as wide as the yoga mat. Letting your elbows just be slightly in front of your shoulders. Let your hips be heavy. You can do a bounce if you want to get into the pose. Um, and sometimes you have to wiggle more than other days, but find your way to stillness in this yin posture. With your elbows slightly in front of your shoulders, it should be relaxed. And you also wanna make sure that your elbows are uh, only as wide as your shoulders. And this will help the bones of your arms hold you up rather than your muscles. So maybe close your eyes for this beginning of your pose here. Feel free to do, if you like to do a couple neck rolls in the beginning of Sphinx, or just drop your chin down, stretching the back of your neck here. And notice what you're bringing onto the yoga mat with you this morning. Maybe you remember your dreams or you woke up with a particular feeling. I think one of the hardest things for me is um, in, in remembering my dreams is having an alarm clock. Like the alarm clock goes off and like all of my understanding like leaves my brain. Can't remember it, but I can usually have a feeling of the dream, even if I can't remember the details. And then just notice how, even if it's only been a couple moments for you so far this morning, how your thinking has been. And even though you might have a lot of stories about coming to the yoga mat for the first time after doing drastic things like having a baby, or maybe some of us just had a really intense weekend. <laughs> Lulu wins. <laughs> but just notice that it's not so much about the story that you're making up in your head. You wanna check in more with how you're thinking. Sometimes in the morning, you might feel like you're thinking through cotton balls. And other mornings you wake up a genius. It's totally okay, Lulu. You can be you can be shy this time. And then start to just slowly lower yourself down to the yoga mat. You can cross your forearms, place your forehead onto your forehand arms, and then just wiggle your butt side to side a little bit. And especially if you have the privacy of your own room, you can moan and groan like it's nobody's business. You can let the feelings move through the sounding of your voice, the movement of your body. And then we're gonna transition into sleeping swan and I'll give you an alternative if you need it. So you're gonna lift up, bring your hands underneath your shoulders. You can do a chataranga or a plank if you're just up for that game. Yeah. And then bring your right knee forward to your right wrist. I'm totally off camera. <clears throat> and stretch your left leg back. 
So you wanna stretch your left leg all the way through your toes. And you first start by broadening your chest here, lifting up. And then as you are ready, walk your hands forward. I always feel like you're walking like a cat here, even though it's swan pose. And then find your way into sleeping swan pose, which is really passive. And try to soften into the tender places, allowing your breath to be steady and even. So in our yin practice, we do like a soft unjai breath. So you can still have a little bit of a noisy breath, but it's not this huge dramatic, like the enlightened Darth Vader breath. And take some moments just to navigate and notice the feelings you have this morning. And it might not just be a simple like, oh, I'm happy or, oh, I'm sad, but often we human popsicles are a little bit more complex than that. We don't wanna get so lost in the story about why it is that we came to feel this way. Just noticing right here, right now, And then finally, as this posture comes into its last moment, moments and intensifies, take some time to really notice your physical body, your energy in your body, and even notice if you have an injury or you feel particularly strong. And especially when we're asking this question towards the end of a posture, you'll notice the spot that is most intense for the posture is where your attention goes first. And then you have to will your attention into the other less extreme places. One of the, um, one of the markers of the time we live in and kind of this epitome of uh, patriarchy is this thing of always being like, well, there's an emergency, I have to act like this. And that happens a little bit in our body when we have an injury or we have a place that's really, yeah, healing and sore is that our attention goes to that emergency situation and we kind of dismiss everything else as not as important. <laughs> You'll notice that's often what is a side product of this idea of we got to go faster, we got to be more productive, we got to, yeah, I don't know. But that there, there's this crisis attitude, which is dangerous because it trumps these, you know, being contemplative about something, being able to think about something over time. It often will make one thing really important and dismiss other things. And often it is, you know, in crisis that people actually like drop their own morality. Like, oh, but it's about our family now, or it's about, you know, this is an emergency situation. So I don't have to have the same ideals I usually think I have. So with your next inhale, start to walk your hands back towards you. And let's do this lovely um, 
roll. So you're here and you, you roll onto your right butt cheek. You're gonna put your right hand on the ground and you're gonna lift your left arm and lift the whole left side of your body. It's a little bit like, yay, I won that side, yay. <laughs> and then come back down, find your way to plank or chaturanga and transition to the other side. So moaning and groaning, adding extra flares. Maybe you need a dance move to really work for you this morning. You're allowed to make your practice your own all the way through. I just have a series of suggestions, but it's really up to you what you say yes to, what you say no to, and even what you say, well, I'm gonna think about that, which is our internal maybe. So stretch through your right toes. So even the top of your foot is pointing straight back. Take a couple moments to notice like, oh, I love this pose. Oh, I hate this pose. And then try to explore it a little bit more. So maybe you need a blanket, Paulina, if you wanna have a blanket underneath your chest. There's lots of pillows on the couch. <laughs> And before we move a little bit more outward, take a couple moments and just notice how does your dream life fit together with your thinking? How do they fit together with your feelings? And is there a relationship between your dreams, your thinking and your feeling and how you're experiencing the energy in your physical body? So as an antidote to this crisis attitude, this emergency kind of um, validity, like because it's an emergency, then it's valid somehow. We wanna practice in our own being, in our own relations and relationship, radical holism. So it's even in, you know, we, we refer to ourselves as individuals, undividable. And you'll start to notice that even your language is biased towards language that makes everything a hierarchy, a comparison, And so you'll have this strange experience of trying to understand a truth you know without having language for it, such as this composite, this whole, whole lism of our feeling and thinking and, and, and body. Breathe into the places that are intense and find your participation. Eases the suffering. And if you wanna again, come back to kind of being 
in more of a radical practice, you can really breathe in your own suffering and how this posture, for instance, feels so, um, so intensely in some part of your body, actually literally, not literally, figuratively, breathe in that pain, breathe in the uncomfortableness, breathe in the suffering. And then as you breathe out, you wanna breathe out ease, joy, love, whatever it is that you wanna see more of in the world today. Recently, I remembered that, um, I hadn't really forgot, but it, it just seems so much salient now. But I, I, uh, I had the honor of being valedictorian at my school in, in our, during our high school graduation. And I had this whole speech about how vital it is that we don't succumb to this, this um, that we don't succumb to all the advertising and uh, things are being tried to sell, being sold to us that are telling us that we're weak and sick and we need makeup and we need Spanx and we need like all of these weird medicines to not have these, you know, reactions into our environment. And at 18 years old, I was vehemently talking about the same thing I'm talking about often, which is, you know, we're not less than, you don't wanna commodify or you don't wanna tap into where are my shortcomings, so what can I buy? But we've been put into that system on such a thorough level that we're constantly deciding whether something is good or bad and we put it into a little shelf over there. And then we're constantly being fed this idea that like somehow you are not enough and you need to get this or have this or buy that. So when we, when we work internally in our private inner life, at observing how we are, how we fit together. It really can steal you to this onslaught of ideas that are being presented to us in paid for mainstream media. Where are the advertisements about how healing a hug can be? And then slide your hands back, lift up your chest. This time roll onto your left butt cheek. Yay. And then stretch your whole right side like, ta-da. So you wanna really feel the stretch from the tip of your toes to the tips of your fingers, maybe make some weird noises that only you can make. <laughs> Ooh. And then find your way back and we're gonna do one final uh, yin pose before we start our fire. So you're gonna stretch your legs out in front of you and you might have to like wiggle your knees to make sure your legs really work. And we're practicing this in the yin style. So already, if you're not sitting upright, put some pillows or, or blankets or books underneath your butt so you can lift your hips up higher and therefore more easily tilt your pelvis. Let your legs be relaxed. You can even take your hands and just give yourself a little, nice little massage quickie. And then lift up your chest and start to just lay yourself forward, bowing over your beautiful legs. Let your head drop, let your tongue be soft. Notice you can do whatever you want with your arms. <laughs> it's like when someone's photogra photographing you and they're like, just act naturally. Just do what you do with your arms normally. It can get very awkward with the arms. <laughs> so maybe your hands are on your knees or you're relaxing your elbows towards the floor.
mean, just, just imagine if there was like no money to be made with your bad feelings. Like that, if somehow that was like illegal. You know, in this, you know, epic 18 year old talk that I gave in my graduation. I pointed out this craziness of how much our commerce needs us or the way we have it set up now needs us to think of ourselves as weak, unhealthy and incomplete. So it's just, I mean, it's a radical act to notice, you know, details like how much of our purchasing is oriented towards if I get this, I will do better, or be better, or people will like me more. And even just this loss of memory around how miraculous our bodies are. And they complement our huge spirit. And you can say really that part of our navigating, how does this incredible spirit that is in this finite body, how do they go together? And our feeling life really comes out of this pairing together of those two. Start to roll up. Place your feet on the ground, take your hands back behind you. It's time for three lions. So you're gonna lift up your hips, <laughs> getting a head start as well. Let your head drop back. Now stick out your tongue, look at your third eye and with a whisper, roar like a lion. So you go, <sighs> squeeze your butt, lift your hips higher and <sighs> una mas. <sighs> and then bring your hips back down, wipe off your chin if you need to, and then come sitting on your toes. Maybe you're ready to take off your socks or take off your, you know, sweater. If not now, soon. And we're gonna, we're gonna sound our ohms today, but we're gonna, um, we're gonna have a heart mudra, an anahata mudra here. And so you're gonna bring your, pinky fingers to touch, the base of your palms to touch, your thumbs to touch, and the rest of your fingers are efforting out, you know, just like it takes us work to open our hearts. Kind of effort your fingers out. And then you bring your thumbs to your breastbone. Yes. You can wiggle into it. Beautiful. Then close your eyes, sit tall, empty your breath, take a deep inhale. Ah. Ah. 
and then release your hands bring your bring your hands on the ground and slap out your feet it's nice and gentle actually i don't think bridges here this morning so be loud and then roll back stretch the tops of your feet and then find your way into plank so you're going to bring your hands underneath your shoulders and your feet way back there on the yoga mat <laughs> Now feel your abdominals engaged. Feel free to put your knees on the ground, especially if this is your first class after baby. Let your chest be open, even here. So we're, even with your fingers, maybe you notice it takes effort to open your fingers. It takes effort to open your heart. It's not something that just happens to you. So with your inhale, stretch your right arm forward. And then with your exhale, bring your right hand down and inhale, stretch your left arm forward and bring your hand down. Inhale, stretch your right leg back and up. Oh yeah. And then staying in plank, love bug. <laughs> and then put your right foot down and inhale, stretch your left leg. And then put your left foot down. That sounds, <laughs> inhale, reach your right arm forward. This is like obedience check. And then lift up your left leg. What? I did. I said it. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got to try the opposite. Put your hand and foot down. Get your plank again. It might have come into a small little mountain. Uh huh. And then reach your left arm forward, reach your right leg back. Notice if your hips are still squared. And then bring your limbs back down. Now bend your knees deeply and let your hips pull you back to downward facing dog. And then like you're the like you're a little engine, you're gonna inhale and roll over the top to plank and then push staying low to downward facing dog. It makes me think of the the like the just the beginning of a of a choo-choo train. What do you call them? <laughs> of a steam train going. Just a couple more times, or maybe starting to row your boat. That's the motion I'm doing as I try to mimic what I'm doing with my hands. One more time. Beautiful. And then just stay in your downward dog for a moment with your knees softly bent. And just notice already, are you starting to, you know, steam up your engines? <laughs> yeah. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way, look forward and lightly hop your feet to your hands or walk your feet forward. Inhale, drag your chest halfway lift. Notice the effort of your abdominals to keep your heart open. Exhale, release and bow down. Let your head drop. Push down with your feet and roll up one vertebrae at a time. Stretch up tall and exhale. Bring your hands to heart center. Samasti tihi. Tihi. And then relax your arms down. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Get taller. Exhale, bow down, softening your knees as you let your head drop. Inhale, halfway lift, uh, strong abdominals, open heart, and then just fly your arms back here. So you're doing halfway lift with airplane arms, your palms facing down. Beautiful. And then bow forward, relaxing your arms down, let your head drop. Inhale, halfway lift with the little flare of your arms. The big flare? And then exhale, bow down. One more time. Inhale, lift up. Maybe even wiggle your fingers like you got tail feathers. Yay. And then with your exhale, find your way to plank. Oh, this is fun. I think we were here before. All right, step your feet together. And then just lift up your right foot so your toes are lined up with your heel. You can even do a little cheat. Pear was just showing us by putting, putting your toes onto your heel. So your right toes are touching your heel. And then just shift back and forth a couple of times. Like it's a little micro moves, but notice how it gets those really micro little muscles in your abdominals working. Let your fingers spread out. Notice what you're doing with your face, your feelings. All right, and then relax your right foot down. Now for me, I would just, let's just do this. Go back to downward facing dog with your knees deeply bent, reach up, and then glide forward with your inhale to plank again. There we are again. And then lift up your left foot. So just hovering your left foot. So your toes are just above your right heel or doing the wonderful little cheat with your toes on your right heel. Inhale, move forward, exhale back. Do that little like, oop, I'm just hanging out. What am I gonna do? Am I going backwards or forwards or backwards or forwards? Beautiful. 
and then bring your left foot down and let your knees bend, reach back to downward facing dog. One more time, roll over the top, come into plank and then slowly lower all the way to the ground, touching chaturanga, then coming all the way down. Stretch your toes out. Now, everyone, before you even lift up your chest, engage your thighs so your kneecaps lift off the ground. Your toenails are pushing down. And then inhale, low baby cobra. Elbows come back behind you. Exhale, release and bow down. Take your um, hands outside of your yoga mat and inhale, lift up, diva cobra. Oh, yeah, baby. There's a diva cobra. Like you have a really wide collar. And then exhale, release down. Keeping your hands like that. You got it, Izzy. That's what I was thinking. Inhale, lift up. And then with your exhale, drop your right shoulder down to the ground. Inhale, lift up. Keeping your hands in the diva cobra. Exhale, bring your other shoulder down to the ground. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale, down with the right. Inhale up, down with the left. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Tuck your toes. Oh, I'm kind of feeling cheeky, but inhale, lift up plank. What? Yeah. And then bend your knees and take yourself back to downward facing dog. I know that was sneaky with the push up. Take a full breath in and with your exhale, sigh out some good stuff. Mm. Notice that you're getting warmer still, feeling the embers of your fire fueled and glowing. Take another full warming inhale, empty your breath all the way, look forward and lightly hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, drag your chest forward. Lots of work with this open heart. Exhale, release and bow down. Push down with your feet, rise up tall, stretch up high and exhale, come home, samasti tihi. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift. And then either jump to chaturanga or step back to plank and lower halfway down chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let your knees be soft. Your heels are most likely still lifting off the, not lifting, they're off the yoga mat, even if you're reaching them down. And if your heels are bumping into the yoga mat, you may also like taking your feet further back. So you have a bigger base to your downward facing dog. Feel this Unjayi breath breathing through your nose and having a small constriction in the back of your throat like you're doing a stage whisper or trying not to wake the baby. <laughs> Think something nice. Give yourself a little, um, a little cheerleader moment. Like you're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. I'm so glad you're here right now. Take another full inhale. Empty your breath all the way and lightly hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, <laughs> halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Now bend your knees, drop your booty. Inhale, ooh, katsasana. And then keeping a bend in your knees, you're going to stretch your arms back behind you. So you have Ukatasana with these weird little airplane wings. And then inhale your arms up. And with your exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float. Exhale, sweet chaturanga or the ground. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Maybe a hint of a smile. Exhale, downward facing dog. I mean, it wouldn't kill you, is it? Take a full breath in and just sigh it out. Then inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. All right, great. Now just bend your knee, let your hips spin open. And then just play with your, the weight distribution. So maybe lift up onto your left fingertips. Mm -hmm. Now left links. If, if this isn't enough to make you a little unstable, then actually start to lift up your left hand. And if that's not enough to really make you question if you're gonna fall or not, maybe even take your hand to either slap or grab your foot. 
Beautiful. And then release your leg. Your hip is still spinning open. Take another full inhale. And with your exhale, bring your right knee to your nose. I was going to say your right nose. Inhale, stretch your leg long. And then exhale, bring your foot in between your thumbs and windmill up warrior two. Now find your alignment. So what do I always tell you in warrior two? Tuck your tail. <laughs> you want to have your hips lined up with the long part of your mat and really think about lengthening your hands length. Like imagine if you had to actively grow your fingernails from here. Yes. Now make sure that you're deep in the lunge. So your right knee's over your right ankle. And now can you make peace with the posture? Even if you don't like it, you do like it. Take a full inhale and then windmill your hands the other side of your foot. Exhale, sweet chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. Now notice if you're making up a story, it's going to be awesome if you're going to make something up. So bend your knee and let your hips spin open. Now notice already, are your shoulders squared? So that's part of what we do here that's going to help. And then lift up to your right fingertips. Other right fingertips. Rechts, rechts, mein Schatz. And then reach your arm up. Maybe hold on to your foot. Maybe just slap your foot or maybe just think about your foot. Very nice. And then with your next exhale, bring your knee to your nose. And I believe we went straight for it. Step your foot in between your thumbs. Rise up, warrior two. Like that transition for me always feels a really nice expansive movement. Like, ta-da, I'm here. <laughs> Hello. Tuck your tail. So you want the support of your butt underneath you. You want the integrity of having your hips lined up with your heart, with your head. So you can find this nice, full, upright axis in this posture. Feel the inner rotation of your left thigh rotating up. Ah. <laughs> Maybe open your right hip more. Let your thigh burn. Let it burn, let it burn. <laughs> and then take a full fueling inhale, exhale. I love Chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now you can just bend your knees. If you need more of a break, make sure you're giving yourself these moments. You don't need my permission, but you're welcome to come into child's pose. Um, if you're, you know, I'm just gonna leave that open-ended, but we have, all of us have different biographies, different bodies, different moments in our life right now. So come back to this idea of transforming what is hard and challenging for you in this practice into what you wanna see more of, because that's how magical we are. So if you're in child's pose, find your way back to downward facing dog. Maybe with a hint of a smile, take a full breath in. Empty your breath all the way. Look forward and lightly hop your feet in between your hands and lift up halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. <laughs> Bend your knees, drop your butt, inhale. Ooh, katasana. And then with your exhale, open arm twist to your right. Ta-da! Yeah, we're having a ta-da class. <laughs> Inhale up to center, and with your exhale, open up to the left. Ta-da! <laughs> Inhale up to center. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift, and then walk or float. Exhale, either come straight to the ground. Inhale, low cobra, or chaturanga, upward facing dog. Hands spread out. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. And with your exhale, take your knee to your nose. Really lift your knee higher at the end of your exhale and step your foot in between your thumbs. Rise up, warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Lengthen your right leg. And with your exhale, trikonasana, triangle pose. 
Inhale here, feeling your open heart. Notice what is a different kind of effort this is here. So you are tucking your right buttocks to your left heel. So notice as you bring that activity of tucking your buttocks to your heel, it allows you to lean your shoulders further back. Very nice. Take another full inhale, fingertips to fingertips. You're still growing your nails. And with your exhale, sweet chataranga. You might keep your right leg lifted through the vinyasa if you want a little extra or grow, throw in a running person. Nice. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your gorgeous left leg up to the sky. With your exhale, bring it to your knee and at the end of your exhale, really lift it even higher and then step your foot forward with all the space you created. Rise up, warrior two. Tuck your tails. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Lengthen your left leg, bring your left hip underneath your right and exhale, come into triangle pose. So your hand, your um, left hand is either on your shin, hooking on to your, your big toe with your peace fingers and your thumb, Ashtanga style, or even just right in front of your leg with no, no support. Very nice, Sabine. So notice the different flavor of effort it takes for you to keep your heart open in this pose. Imagine you could drop your ribs down. Take another full inhale. <laughs> we can go over it later. And then exhale. I love Chaturanga someday. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Keep your elbows in for your vinyasa. Exhale, downward facing dog. Find a small bend in your knees. And now for some of you, you might be like, I am so hot. I feel like I'm going to like burst into flames. But if you need to get a little bit more, if you're wearing like all black and a turtleneck, you maybe want to start to um, <laughs> jump your feet in and out for, for jumping jacks here. So you're downward face jumping, downward facing dog jumping jacks. Now, I don't know what they're called when you do more than that but maybe it's like downward facing dog, Jack and Jill's. <laughs> so you can step your feet out and in and forward and backward and 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 out and in and forward and backward for five, four, three, two, one. Take a full breath in, empty your breath all the way and then hop your feet forward. Inhale, halfway lift, fill up the back of your lungs. Exhale, release and bow down. Let your head drop. Bend your knee, drop your booty. Ooh, katasana. And then with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center. And now you're going to squeeze your thighs together and twist first to your right, upper body twist, and then drop your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Notice your left knee wants to be like, booyah, come forward and just pull it back a little bit. Now, see if maybe you can start to shift the weight into your right foot. And then maybe like you're doing a slow motion replay, stretch your right, your left leg back, hovering your leg. And then very slowly step it all the way back to the end of your yoga mat. So you're in twisted Anjaniyasana here. And guess what we're coming up to? With your exhale, you're gonna twist all the way open to ta-da, warrior two. <laughs> Yes, it's a big ta-da. How did I get there from here? Inhale, reverse your warrior. And now straighten your leg. And with your exhale, triangle pose. And then inhale, reverse your triangle. So your right, your right leg stays long and extended. Now you're going to wrap your thumbs with your fingers. And with your exhale, you're going to float into half moon. Allow your right fingers to find the floor if you need to, only if you need to. Notice if your left hip's really on top of your right hip. All right, with your exhale, you're gonna bring both of your hands down to the ground, keep your left leg lifted. And now you're, you're gonna bend, you're gonna bend um, your right knee and your left knee, bringing your left knee behind your right knee and then lift your hands for Shiva curtsy. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. And then step your left foot next to your right foot. Ta-da, Ukatasana. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And then with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center and twist to your left. So notice what likes like your upper body's like, woo, I'm gonna go to my left. And your lower body's like, ooh, let me do all these weird wiggly things we didn't talk about. Sound familiar? Um, yeah. See if you can pull your right knee back. Gorgeous. And then see if you can start to lift up your right leg. Imagining that you're, you're really stretching through the ball of your big toe, stretch it back, straight back while your left knee is still bent. And then bring it all the way to the back of your mat, twisting on Janyasana. What you guys can't see here is there's this aloe plant that I keep walking into, so it's like poking me in the butt. Lift your back heel, Paulina. Let your heart lift. It's hard to keep an open heart, isn't it? Now, remember where you're going. We're going for that big ta-da movement. Ta-da! <laughs> Very nice. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And with your exhale, straighten your left leg. Touch down all the way into triangle pose. And then inhale, reverse your triangle. Notice a slight different feeling, a different open heart here. So just lift up your arms. Yes. And up and back. And then make your hands, wrap your thumbs and start to float into half moon. So if you're working on your balance, you can always do half moon against the wall as you can do with triangle and warrior two. And when you're ready, bring your left hand to the floor if it isn't there already. And then with your exhale, bring your right hand to bend both of your knees as you bring your right knee behind your left knee. Lift up your hands for Shiva curtsy. And then you're gonna come all the way down to the ground. Your knee slides all the way down and then your butt comes down as well. It's gonna be awesome. Your left knee is on top for most of us. You're gonna lift up your right arm and you're gonna twist away from your right arm, hooking your elbow to the outside of your left knee. Inhale, let your heart open up here. Exhale, twist. So it's a little bit like trust. Like it's not someone else's job to be trustworthy. They may or they may not be. We'll find out in the end, right? But it's your privilege to be trusting. You get, to, you get to place trust in people. And it's up to you. It's your act. And the crazy and cool thing is, it's not really so much whether they're worthy or not. We don't need to have those hierarchies. Your capacity to trust is absolutely uncorrelated to whether people are trustworthy. And it's not something that they really should have to earn. It's something that you give freely. All right, unwind. And now let's play a little bit, just a wee bit. Don't worry, class is nearly over. But you're gonna put your hands onto the ground and bring the top of your head onto the ground. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you can see your fingernails. And then once you can see your fingernails, you're gonna lift up your legs. Now, maybe you come into headstand, maybe you just let a little bit of air underneath your toes and then switch your legs. And then bring your knees all the way down. <laughs> now, fake it till you make it. If you didn't do a headstand today, Lulu, make sure you're not giving yourself a hard time. Inhale, lift up tall. Who, who's having fun? Raise your left arm. And then with your exhale, twist away from your arm. Let your heart be open. So again, your, your business, your job. You know, it's so easy to have that feeling of like, oh, they make me more loving. If they are worthy, then I'll be loving. But instead, we have to really flip that on its head. It's your job to keep your heart open. It's your job to be more loving, to be more kind. 
It's not because of anybody else. I mean, sure, there's, there are wonderful people that help you on this journey. Like when you fall in love, oh my gosh, then it's all of a sudden so easy to be like wide open. Let your whole body lengthen and get tall here. Ooh, so worth it. And then twist back around. And we're gonna get a nice final little ending here. You're gonna grab the back of your thighs and you're gonna lift up your legs and keep your heart lifting. Maybe smile for the little human on the screen. <laughs> and then maybe you hold onto your toes and straighten your legs. Maybe you just think about it. If you go through the painting, you gotta buy it. No, I'm just kidding. And then slowly lower yourself down to the yoga mat. Do whatever else you need to do. Find your way into Shavasana. Allow yourself to totally relax. I'm just gonna baby stare. You can totally chill, Lulu. Let gravity help you. Cause it turns out even gravity, despite the aging thing is on your team. Colluding for your success.
With your next inhale, start to invite your breath to the edges of your body. Look at your fingers and your toes. With your inhale, you can stretch your arms over your head and stretch your feet away from your hands. With your exhale, roll into a ball and curl onto your side and just pause for a moment here, feeling the vibrancy and the vitality. And then help yourself up into a comfortable seated position. So either easy pose, lotus, sitting on your knees, whatever works. Bring your hands to heart center. Root down, lift up your spine, stretch tall, open your heart here. And let's close with our open heart mudra again, Anahata mudra. So let your fingers reach out, blossoming out. Keep your thumbs to your breastbone. Now close your eyes and just remember all these fine people that we're together with in the moment, if not in the same space. We can't do this alone. And let's close our class with a final ohm. So empty your breath, take a deep inhale. Ah. Bring your prayer hands to your third eye. Invite the divine light. And as we bow forward together, we say namaste. And so much love. Make some noise. Oh, <laughs>